So Eric, this is uh, the setup I have for my car. You can see I have the uh, the shafts pretty much torqued down. The engine and transmission are fairly set up for their install height. And I'm almost on center here, just a couple millimeters, a uh, quarter of an inch or so. Uh, if this is the final install height, it appears the axles are going to be long enough as they are. Um, I don't have the uh, the CVs bolted in, but there's about, let's say, almost half an inch, and the axle is pressed up in as far as it can go into the coupler. So, uh, a little bit of spline showing there. And on the, uh, the passenger side, you can see there's quite a bit of space. And um, I'm not sure if I can see the bottom here. This one has the boot off. So I can move the, uh, the shaft horizontally. I know I have to account for the travel and suspension. Um, plus the movement of the motor um, and transmission mount. I would say, if anything, maybe half an inch shorter, and that's probably going to be enough for clearance and, uh, and travel suspension and the shaping of the motor and that sort of thing. I don't know what else I have to account for. The, um, what do you call it? Slave cylinder. This guy here, so it's not even connected. I'm having trouble putting it in, but as you say, I'll have to force it in there if it's the right part. You can see the end of the, uh, the fork there. So if anyone's using this setup, might want to put it in first and let the weight of the transmission squeeze it down when you're bolting it up. Other than that, I think I'm good to go. Let me know your thoughts on the axle length. Um, it almost appears as I'll have enough uh, clearance here, even with the suspension travel. I might even raise the back end up of the transaxle when I'm mounting it. So I'll have quite a bit of clearance there. So I'll talk to you soon.